All right, we're live. We're live for another episode. And on today's episode, I interview a Canadian-based rapper originally born in Windsor, Ontario, now residing in Winnipeg, Manitoba. His latest video, The World Is Mine, is available on YouTube. And his latest single, My Baby, featuring Roselle, is now available on Spotify. Welcome to the Winner Circle, Max Wins. My man, I appreciate you for having me, bro. Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I've seen you in the social media world doing some amazing things. I'm really excited to share your story on how you became a rapper and how you're pursuing your passion um, today and this now. And as we talked before this conversation, the goal of these conversations are to uplift, inspire, and empower everyone listening along to move forward with greater faith, belief, and trust in themselves on their own personal journeys, their own personal hero's journey ahead. Um, and our first question just really sets us up on a nice note a nice positive note and that is right here right now max what do you love about your personal world not all the external chatter not what you see in the news and in the media but what do you love about your personal world for me it is uh i love this is a good question i love seeing like all my homies come together and we're all living our dreams out how we like not exactly how we envision but it's like wow we're doing it you know what i mean like we have random people coming up to us wherever we're at just being like yo like you inspire me to do this you inspire me to do that like keep putting on for the city and that just that's a, a crazy feeling for me because i started this when i was 13 you know what i mean and, and i'm 25 now so this is like a 12 year grind you know what i mean like i've been working towards this for 12 years and now I feel like I'm kind of getting to see my flowers a little bit. And uh, it's a crazy feeling because just thinking about when I was a kid, like how I would feel now, like just knowing that I'm doing what I'm doing it. I'm proud of myself. You know what I mean? I'm proud of myself and I'm proud of everybody that's on the on the ride with me. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's not an easy game, but it takes a lot of strong minded people. You know what I mean? So I'm really just proud of everybody. Yeah, that's a great answer. I'm excited to delve deeper into that. Um, but first, I guess I ask a question I ask uh, all my guests pertains to their personal mission. So your mission in your music, your mission that serves you in everything you do. So what is your overarching mission? What is your why for what you are doing in this world? That's uh, That's deep too, bro. So I feel like I've always loved music. I've always just had a feeling for music and it's always just inspired me and made me feel some type of way. And uh, when I started being a rapper, one of my homies just heard me rapping somebody else's song one day and he was all like, yo, like you got a good voice. You, you should take this serious and you should write your own. And ever since then, I've I've been doing it. You know what I mean? So it was kind of my homie that inspired me to do this because he was the one that said like yo you got a dope voice like why don't you give this a shot because i i always loved music but i never thought like yo i'm gonna be a rapper you know what i mean i just i loved rap music i love uh sorry i think my phone tripped out i love rap music i love r&b music like i love every type of genre you know what i mean i could put on any kind of music and and get a feel for it so i think i really owe it to my homie who told me yo take this shit serious because he was a rapper too and he was i think he's like five years older than me so he was already doing his thing he he had like he had a setup he had a camera so he like kind of showed me yo like this is what to do this is not what to do you know so i think i think i owe it to him because it's it's bigger than me you know what i mean like i can't take all the credit for yeah this this and that like of course i put in the work and i got myself to where i'm at but there's other people that played a part in inspiring me. Like even my mom, my mom was like a big music head. And I remember being a little kid and she would just put on the radio and like, she would like quiz me on songs and be like, who's this artist? What's this song called? You know, like little pop quizzes type shit like that. And uh, I think that really motivated me to, to find my love for music and have a deeper connection to music, you know? Yeah. And with that love for music, what are you trying, what is the message you're trying to share? What is like, yeah, what are you, what is the mission? I want to, I want to inspire everybody else who felt like me as a little kid. Cause I always felt like I was like the, uh, the outcast kind of 
You know what I mean? Like, I, I was the lost kid. I was like, I didn't know where I belonged. I always kind of hung out with the older guys. I never really chill with kids my age. And uh, I was just influenced by the wrong things at a young age. You know what I mean? And so I feel like I want to inspire kids that are in that position to let them know that, yo, you could do this too. Like you could do anything. You it's It doesn't even have to be a rapper. If you want to be a teacher, if you want to be a fashion designer, an actor, a, a track star, whatever it is, you can do that shit. It's all whatever. It's all in your head. You know, if you put your mind to it, if you really believe that you could do it and you work hard towards it, you can get it done. So I just that's my message to everybody is like everything's possible. It just depends on what you put in your brain. You know what I mean? Because you could take yourself down, but you could bring yourself up. So that's yeah. like what I want to preach to kids and just let them know. Yeah, absolutely. And like, it may be easier for you or it might be harder, but it is what it is. And if someone else could do it, so can you. And mm -hmm. it all starts with getting in the arena, taking a step forward, action, uh, embracing the progress. And to me, that's what being a winner is. We live in a very destination oriented society. When I get this job, when I get this amount of money, when I get this house, relationship, car, record label, et cetera, et cetera, then I'll be happy. But then we get to that destination and maybe you're happy for a bit. And then it's like, oh, now what? And that's because we're missing the song. And that song is the process, the journey. And so for me, being a winner is embracing the process, making a step forward now that moves you closer towards your goal versus the opposite, not taking that step forward, sitting back and not um, pursuing your dream, pursuing your win. So for me, a winner is process over destination. What does being a winner mean to you, Max? And what does winning in your life look like to you today? Wow. So that's crazy because I feel like I'm I'm still dealing with the trying to have fun in the now. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, because I've been grinding for probably, I've been releasing music for four years straight now. So since 2019. um, And I feel like I've just been so stressed out and just so like, I need to do this if I want to get here and I can't have fun and I got to be locked in. I got to be focused. But now I'm kind of like, whoa, like all these years went by. I feel like I didn't really live in the moment until I watch all the videos back. And I'm all like, damn, like, that was a good show or that was a good moment or whatever it is. So now I'm really trying to just live in the moment and be in the now. And uh, yeah, I've been having to check myself a lot on that, like recently and be like, yo, like you're tripping, like this is going to happen. So stop, stop worrying about it, you know, just put in the work. Yeah. Not only is it going to happen, it's already happening. Mm -hmm. exactly that's the thing it's already happening so why are you tripping about it you know that's what i've been having to tell myself and but, like go ahead sorry i was just gonna say the uh the de definition of a winner is that's a tough one for me because i feel like like that's even something that i'm having to check myself on now is like i feel like i'm definitely winning but I just want so much more. So it's like, I don't even have like a full definition of what I think a winner is, you know, because even the dude who comes in second place is still a winner. You know what I mean? So it's like, I feel like that's something even recently that I'm having to like dive in deeper with and trying to figure out, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Stepping into the arena is a win to me. And it's embracing the highs and lows because that is inevitable on our journey, the highs and the lows. And it's what we do um, throughout that process. That's what's important. And it doesn't need to be big steps. Like from what I learned from my personal journey, um, and I learned this a lot from yoga is we could be moving forward with just simple little steps, like just being aware of our breath. Like, are we breathing in our fight or flight breath? Or are we breathing in our calm, relaxed breath? Just changing that awareness changes your reality. What is your posture? Are, are we open? Are we sending the signal to our brain we're safe? Or are we closed off and sending the signal to our brain that we're in danger? Um, what is our vibration? What is the energy we're putting out and in turn putting in? Or just not being aware of that. And then lastly, are we present? Or are we caught up in the past or the future? And just those small shifts alter our lives. Um, so yeah, it doesn't have to, you don't have to 
do huge steps. It's just these, these little steps in time, right? Hearing those negative thoughts, letting it go. You're winning, you're moving forward, you know, you're staying present. Um, so we're, you're doing it. We're doing it. Let's celebrate. Um, let's celebrate some of your wins, um, from our conversation so far and earlier on, like you seem like a very humble guy, but this shot spotlight is now being shown on you. And I just want you to celebrate some of your accomplishments that you're most proud of. Oh, wow. There is. So the past year, so I'll, I'll tell you something. So, uh, at the end of like 2022, like in the summer of 2022, I was in a really like low place mentally, you know, I was getting really close to, to give up the music stuff and give up the dream. Cause I was just like, nothing's happening. I feel like I'm don't, I'm not getting the recognition that I deserve. Like I, f I felt like no one took me serious. So I was really contemplating, like, should I just give up? You know, like, should I just stop doing music? And then uh, in September, Enali Choppa came to Winnipeg for two days in a row and I got a call less than 24 hours before the show and the promoter the promoter who's now my manager which is crazy he just called me and he was like how much do you love me and I was like what and he's like how much do you love me and I was like what are you talking about and he's all like I got you both spots for the NLE show back to back get a set list ready, get your team together, get an outfit and meet me at the club. And that was, it was so like perfectly imperfect because I was rushed. I had to get a DJ. I had to get a free DJ and his equipment was messing up and a bunch of stuff like happened at the show that it was bad, but it was perfect because I ended up flipping it. I got the crowd to like engage with me. Like, when the DJ shit was going wrong and my homie was like, the security wasn't letting my homie on stage. And uh, I ended up getting the, the whole crowd to like clear pass. So my homie can like walk right through to the stage and just a bunch of different shit was like going on, but it was such a perfect moment that I feel like every time that I do a show, I'm chasing that high that I got from that first show. And it was just an amazing moment. So that's one of them. And then I opened up at uh, Burton Cummings Theater in March. And that one, I got the call probably three days before. And my homies were all like, yo, like, I don't think we're going to get it. I don't think we're going to get it. And I just told them, like, look, we got the call for NLE like 14 hours before the, the show. We're going to get the call. Like, just trust me. Trust me. And then we got the call like two or three days before. And that was, I think it was like 1,500 people in the crowd. And it was just crazy. It was crazy. But that was another moment where I didn't really live in the moment until I got off stage and watched videos. And then I was like, wow, like we really, we really killed it. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm always my biggest critic though. You know, like even my biggest hater, I'm just, I feel like I'm really hard on myself because I want everything like just to be perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. A few other wins that I like to celebrate is the release of your latest video, The World of My Is Mine. It's already have over 75,000 views, which is quite notable. And your latest single, My Baby, um, where you have over 20,000 monthly listeners. So those are two huge accomplishments as well. So congratulations. Thank you, bro. Let's talk about both those um, those songs, The World Is Mine and My Baby. Um, what inspired you? with with both you can start with whichever one you prefer for sure so uh so for the world is mine i've been working on an album for the past year and uh i took a trip to vancouver in february and i was listening to my album when i was out there just like driving around the city with my homies smoking up and i was all like man something's missing from the album you know like there's a few songs that were on there that i was like I got to replace these. I got to make some new ones. So when I came back to Winnipeg, uh, I started making a bunch of new songs and shit. And The World Is Mine was one of them. And it didn't end up going on the album, but I liked it enough that I was like, okay, I got to drop this soon, you know? So we shot a video and, and yeah, we put it out. But yeah, so the whole thing is The World Is Mine 
it's kind of like the world is yours from Scarface, you know? I really love Scarface. I even got like the world is mine tatted on my wrist. So it's like, you know, I'm a big believer in just manifestation and you can have whatever you want if you believe in it, you know? So that was kind of the the inspiration for that song. And then for uh for my baby, I've really been trying to uh cook up more songs for the ladies, you know what I mean? I'm trying to get into that that pocket. And uh so I cooked up that song like last year and I went to a writing camp and uh I met Roselle at the writing camp and I would I told her like, yo, I have this song, like I already hear you on it. It was crazy because I was in the studio working with another group of artists and then I heard her vocals playing in another room. So I left my studio, ran to her studio and I was like, whose fucking voice is this? Because I need to work with her. And then I sent her the track. She hopped on it. And yeah, the rest is history. Beautiful. So let's uh, rewind time. Um, you got started in this rap game. <clears throat> When you're thir- when you're 13 years old, we can start there. We can even go back further when your mom was playing you music in the car and giving you quizzes. But yeah, let's trace the origin story of Max wins. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, so I honestly like I remember the first songs like the first songs that I remember being played was uh Big Papa by uh biggie so i always remember just like hearing that around the house or whatever and hearing uh like dmx party up hearing outcast lauren hill you know like stuff like eminem because i grew up in windsor and detroit's like right across the water so everybody loved eminem you know uh so i remember hearing like a lot of that stuff but then even uh like a lot of punk rock, like Rage Against the Machine. Um, trying to think of some more bands. But yeah, like I remember uh, like hearing Audio Slave a lot, Foo Fighters a lot. So I was like really influenced by a lot of different genres growing up, you know. But uh, but yeah, my mom's she was just a music head and listened to everything. Uh, and then you started rapping and some of your friends said oh yo that's legit um yeah so uh so i used to be a skater when i was a kid you know so i'd always be at the skate park always just with my headphones in like just you know skateboarding and uh so yeah one of my homies just heard me rapping one day when i'm skating and he's all like bro like what are you doing like you got the voice you need to just start writing so I went home and started writing and then like the rest is history. I just I studied certain artists that really inspired me. Like growing up, I was heavily influenced by uh Nipsey Hussle, Mac Miller, Tyler the Creator, uh ASAP Rocky. Like those are like some of the ones that when I first started rapping, that's all that I listened to. And uh yeah, so it just started from there. And I didn't really start taking it that serious until uh I think I was 19. I bought I bought a uh, a home studio setup, like a microphone, speakers, audio interface, taught myself how to record myself, and then met some engineers. So I would just send my music to the engineers to mix and master, found a a, a videographer, and yeah, so everything's just been going like probably since 2017 I really started taking it serious but yeah so for probably like five or seven years I was just writing all the time I would hit the studios every once in a while I would get my homies to shoot music videos for me but it wasn't nothing like professional professional you know but then when I was 20 when I was 19 in 2017 that's when I really was like okay I gotta take this shit serious if I want to make it you know so yeah. yeah. How do you take it to the next level at 19? What were the steps involved? So it was really just just staying focused on on the craft and the music and trying to trying to make the best music ever and trying to be the best artist ever cuz even back then looking back I was just talking shit, rhyming rhyming words just to rhyme words basically. You know, like I'm still telling stories and stuff like that but it wasn't like I was trying to make catchy music, you know? Like, I feel like 
only in the past couple of years, I really decided like, yo, I want to make catchy music. I want to try to make a vibe that makes people feel a certain way. You know, I feel like before it was just, okay, I'm going to talk shit and just rap, you know? I feel like, yeah, I just wanted to be known as a rapper before, but now I want to be known as an artist, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how did you go about getting your manager? How did that come into play? Because that was a pivotal change in your career. And how does someone that dreams of being a musician, how do, like, how do they take it to the next level? So I, it's crazy. So I've had two managers before my new manager. And uh, so my first manager got killed in 2019. And then I got a new manager in 2020. And then me and him parted ways, I think in 2021. And then so from 2022 till about August of this year, I was just grinding by myself. And uh, so my manager now, he's he's a promoter at one of the clubs. And he was the one that was putting me on the shows. And he he's just seen my work ethic. He saw how I grinded. He saw how I performed. He saw how I uh, interact with people. And I think he just, he took a liking to that. And he just, he wanted to help, you know? He saw where we're lacking. And he was just all like, yo, like, I got connections over here. I can help you do this, this, and that. Like, I want to be a part of your journey, you know? So it, it, it kind of just happened organically. Because he was, like, watching us for probably a year, almost a year, just, doing shows and working and yeah like I don't know if he was studying us and kind of just getting a feel for us but yeah so I met him I met him through the shows yeah so for a new musician how do you get started with take getting shows so first you have to write your music you have to write and experiment with your music play create um once you got that step done, how did you start getting, how do you start booking shows? What's the process look like for a musician in today's industry? So how I started doing this was uh, like after COVID and all, like everything opened up again, a lot of local artists started putting their own shows together. So it would be like probably five or 10 just local artists. We'd all sell tickets and then everybody's friends would pull up, you know, get new fans do stuff like that but that's kind of just locally but I started doing that and I did that for like a year maybe year and a half and it was fun like that was one of the times where I just I had the most fun I was learning how to perform and it was only in front of like 20 30 maybe 50 people but those were some of the the funnest shows because it was just like I don't give a fuck I'm having fun with it tonight and uh, I feel like that really helped me um, for my new shows. Like that really taught me how to perform at the bigger venues with five, 700 people watching, you know? Yeah. But uh, I feel like that would help a lot of new artists is just starting doing local shows because I, I started doing that and then I kind of just got picked up. Like I got lucky and I just got picked up because promoters seen me doing my thing like I didn't have to send a press kit and this this and that and that's what you're supposed to do like that's what I'm doing now but I kind of just got lucky and got picked up and then then I got a press kit made and then I started like sending it out you know but yeah so sure. I was kind of just blessed partially partially luckily partially blessed but like you created like you were ready when those opportunities arose like you know you're putting in the work you're writing songs you're practicing you're um putting yourself in front of crowds no matter how big or small so when, when that opportunity knocked you're able to answer so preparation preparation meets opportunity you know like yeah it was one of those moments um, you mentioned COVID. Um, how did that affect you as a musician? You couldn't go out and play in concerts and like it is hard hard to kind of even connect with people. So how did that influence you as a musician? It's crazy because uh, it definitely sucked because, yeah, like no shows, no artists coming to the city and like nothing being open. But uh, but me and my boys didn't really give a fuck. Like, we were going to the studio. We were shooting music videos. We were still, like, 
10, 20 deep. Like, so we kind of didn't really give a fuck. Sometimes like the studio would be like, yo, we can't today because it's a little too heat or whatever is going on. But we we did what we could do and we had fun. You know, we had good times during that. But yeah, it was kind of shitty because no shows. But uh, a lot of a lot of studio sessions went down. A lot of video shoots went down and uh, we still we still made it work. Yeah, you chose to make the most of the opportunity. I respect that. Exactly. Uh, let's talk about your relationship with fear. Fear undoubtedly reared its head all throughout your your journey so far, and I'm sure still now. Um, mm-hmm. Let's talk about your relationship with fear. What does that look like, and how do you overcome that voice in your head? That's another thing that, you know, I'm still working on. I feel like everybody's working on daily is – uh just telling yourself that you can do it and not to be afraid. Um, uh, I forget the book that I read. There's a, I love, I love listening to audio books. There's this one book that I listened to and, uh, I think it was the three magic words. And in the book, in the book, it says, uh, God made man perfect, but man made fear. Like we created fear. God didn't create fear. So that is, that's all in our head. You know what I mean? It's, it's not real. So you just have to, you got to really check yourself and just let yourself like know that it's not real and it's all just in your head. And you're the only person that's creating these negative thoughts or this doubt and this fear. So you have to, you, you got to check yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. Could you give us an example? Like what was the last time or uh, a memory you have where, you're really like struck by fear and how you overcame that, how you moved past that. I feel like even, uh, even just going certain places, you know, it's like, all right, you got to be on point when you're going over here. So maybe, maybe tonight's not the right night to go, or maybe this isn't the right night to go. But then sometimes you got to check yourself and be like, all right, are you just tripping? Because, you think something's gonna something bad's gonna happen, or are you creating something bad's gonna happen? So sometimes you just gotta be like, fuck it, I'm going out tonight. You know, I'm yeah. gonna face that fear that I think something bad's gonna happen, but I'm gonna prove to myself that no, it's just in my head, you know? Yeah. And from my experience, the more we step into the uncomfortable, the more we face fear and recognizing that tiger, that lion, there's just a little pussycat. Um <laughs> yeah it's easier exactly exactly and yeah it's like i feel like they're we're always being tested like i'm a i'm a big believer on just i feel like everything's already written you know what i mean like i feel like everything has already happened before you know what i mean so i feel like we're being tested in those moments to see like yeah are you get are you gonna bitch out right now or are you gonna pull it together and fucking do what you gotta do you know yeah, absolutely. So along your journey, you've met like many mentors, allies, and helpers on your path. Mm-hmm. So um, so we don't need to name all of them, but let's just name a few, a few that come to mind. Who were they and what were your key takeaways you've learned from them that you've incorporated into your being? Um, Damn, that's a good one. So so I'm going I'm to name my homie Dre. Dre's uh he's my hype man. He's a part of my label, Lost Souls. Uh he's an artist. He goes by FPS Dre. And he's really like a big brother to me. And he he's been through it all, you know? Like he's he's been through it all and he's lived to tell the story. And I feel like I could go to him with any situation, ask for any type of advice, and he's gonna give it to me real and raw. He's not, he's not a yes man. He's not just going to agree with everything. Like he'll tell me straight up, this is what it is. This is what you have to do. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I just met him in 2020, maybe 2019. And we just clicked instantly. And he's been like a big brother to me ever since. So that's definitely one of the people on my list for sure. And uh yeah, I feel like even my mom's, I got to throw my mom's in there because she's been a, a big mentor just to 
make sure that I believe in myself. Like ever since I was a kid, she always just like made me feel like I could do anything that I wanted. And I feel like if she didn't help me think like that, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So she really is the one who drilled everything and made me who I am. You know what I mean? So yeah, she's definitely up there. Yeah. And um, your sister, Kennedy, she's the one that. Hell yeah. My sister too. Yeah. She's a fucking, she's a legend. What you admire about her? She is so strong minded that she could do like same thing with me. Anything that she wants to do, she will do it. She will get it done. She will find a way and make it happen, you know? So yeah, doesn't take no for an answer. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shout out Kennedy. Um, how about musicians? Who are some musicians um, that most inspired you on your path and what do you like about them? So Nipsey Hustle is definitely my number one because everything that I do is kind of based off his, what he did, you know, his blueprint. Uh, so Nipsey Hustle is definitely my number one just because of his, uh, his business mind, the way that he carries himself, the morals and principles that he stood on. And and the music, the music was amazing. So Nipsey's definitely up there. Um, feel like Lil Wayne's got to be up there because Lil Wayne's just crazy. He could just rap for days. So Lil Wayne's definitely up there, and uh, probably DMX. DMX is another one that his music is just it's it's powerful. You know what I mean? The his stage presence is powerful. The way that he would say a prayer and have people crying is just insane, you know? All right. Thank you for those great shares. Uh, my next question pertains to challenges. So it's not just, it's not only wins as we've discussed, there's sometimes lows on our journey and it's how we navigate those, those downs, those lows that really make us who we are. We get that choice and that's the most powerful of tools. That's choice. Um, so yeah, let's discuss some challenges. What have been some of your biggest challenges on your journey and how did you overcome these challenges and what did you learn from them? So I feel like my biggest challenge is mm, I feel like getting my name out there. Like a lot of people blame, oh, the place you're from, the place you're from. And I don't think it really matters where you're from for you to blow up because the internet is crazy, but I feel like my biggest challenge is I haven't figured out the right, the right marketing system for when I release. Like, I feel like it's a, it's on the business end that I still need to figure some things out. So my music can really cut through and reach different markets. You know what I mean? Cause I feel like right now I'm still very just local i have a lot of things going on in like other places around the world but it's not as big as as it will be one day you know what i mean so i feel like i'm still just at the drawing board trying to figure out that uh -huh. it's happening it's happening mm -hmm. um one of my favorite authors stephen pressfield he describes resistance as that negative force in the world that keeps us from fulfilling our dreams what have been your strategy at overcoming resistance and so this could be like you have an idea, like uh, a song idea, but you just stay in bed or you go out with your buddies. Like you don't, you don't write it. It's like that things that prevents you from putting in the work, you know, I feel manifestation. Um, it's more than just thinking it. It's um, action, like feeling it, putting mm -hmm. it, in writing, you know, creating. Um, so yeah. How do you overcome resistance? That thing that keeps you from, moving forward with your dreams that is inevitable that comes up for us all because it's trying to keep us safe i feel like it's learning the balance of uh like when to have the resistance and when not you know what i mean like i feel like sometimes you're forcing yourself to write a song or you're forcing yourself to put in the work and maybe it's not the right time maybe you haven't lived that experience yet that you're supposed to put on that beat that's how I like look at certain situations because sometimes I'm trying to be writing and I'm listening to this beat and I know that the beat's fire and I'm like, man, how come I can't think of anything right now? And I and then I'll leave the house, go out, go do something for the day or for the night, come back the next day, listen to it, 
and then I'll write a song out of it and I'll be like, oh shit, okay, I needed to link with my homie and talk about this situation or he needed to tell me this story so I could think of this idea and write that down, you know? So I feel like it's finding the balance within within living life and chasing your dreams because sometimes I feel like you could be a robot to your dreams, you know? And And it could be a good thing, but it could be a bad thing because that's something that I'm having to deal with right now too is just, all right, I'm, I'm, I I'm I'm don't want to be a robot to this because I don't want to hate this in five years from now. You know, I want to have fun. I want to live life and experience stuff so I can put that in the music and, and make the music better from it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I hear like patience in this answer, like patience for yourself and patience for the outcome. And that really comes back to what we were talking about earlier. It's just enjoying the process and not being a rush and enjoying the journey. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about your self-care. Um, what the things that you do to make you feel well, um, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, what are some of the foundational, um, self-care wellness tools that you use you to keep you straight on the path? So I definitely, I love being around the homies, you know, love being around like just good people that, you know, that I'm loved by that make me feel loved that I love, you know what I mean? Like, love being around good people um I love learning like I feel like I really love just learning about myself learning about like the way that you think like the way that everybody thinks um yeah like I love audiobooks I love just trying to learn about the world and what's deeper than it you know because I feel like I feel like everything's super deep. Like everybody tries to be like, oh, it's not that deep. It's not that deep. But I feel like everything is really that deep. You know, like I feel like everything is is a sign or it's a message or it's something, you know. So I really that's kind of I don't know. I like getting enjoyment from like learning about shit where I could just like. I don't know, like if someone comes and interacts with me, I could just read them right away. So I like I like to learn more about myself. So I could like read people and read situations and go about shit like that. And uh I love smoking, you know what I mean? I love I love smoking up. And uh yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty simple, bro. Like I honestly just be working and and kicking it, and that's about it. Like I don't be playing video games, like sometimes I watch a movie here and there, but you know, I really just be, I just be working and I love writing. I love, uh, yeah, I love like watching interviews and, and learning about people and shit like that. And, you know, audio yeah. book. So um, I have a few follow up questions from all this, but first um, cannabis, would you love about cannabis and how do you ensure that you use it as a tool rather than um, like a hindrance? Because I'm sure you've seen people where um yeah cannabis can be a great tool but it could also just keep you on your couch and not accomplish anything 1000 percent. for me i've been smoking for a long time and uh i never really smoked just to smoke like probably when i was a teenager i did but i feel like now like when i smoke i smoke when i'm writing i smoke when i'm creating you know because it, it kind of just mellows on my brain it helps me think and it kind of just keeps me keeps me chill. But then sometimes I smoke because uh, cause I might be like anxious, you know, like I might need to smoke just to calm myself down. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't really uh, go to it just to smoke because I'm bored or, you know, stuff like that. Like I only really use it or like smoke it if I'm if I'm creating or if I'm feeling anxious. You know what I mean? I I just uh, calm myself down. Hold up. I got to plug in my phone real quick. Phone's about to die. No, I appreciate that. Um, so you use, you use cannabis to help calm you down. What are some other tools you've learned on your path that help you, that help calm you down? Has, has there any other, has there any other tools that you use for that? Um, to... Yeah. So I feel like, uh, like I'm I'm a big thinker. Like I feel like I could just get lost in my thoughts for forever. So sometimes it's just like reassuring yourself and like telling yourself like 
just positive shit so you can get your mind out of wh- wherever it's at you know what i mean and kind of just calm yourself down and tell yourself it's the it's the fear thing it's you're creating that fear in your head but then now you just got to calm yourself down and tell yourself that it's going to be okay like whatever whatever it is that you're going through or thinking about you just got to tell yourself the opposite of that and be like it's going to be all right you'll overcome this da 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 you know Absolutely. Positive thinking is so huge. And ways I do that is like through my journaling and through affirmations and gratitudes. That really helps me, those journaling practices. You're a writer. Um, does your writing extend beyond your songwriting? No. So so sometimes I do like write stuff. Every year I always write down uh like kind of impossible goals that I'm going to do for the year. And then at the end of the year, I'll check them off and see which ones I did and didn't do. Yeah. But uh, no, I I don't do like too much writing outside of music, but I would love to like write a movie or write a TV show one day. Cause I feel like I could do some crazy shit with that, but nothing yeah. yet. That'd be fun. Um, So your sister, she's a big Yogi. How do you attend to your physical activity? Do you practice yoga, basketball? How, like physical activity is the number of one thing we could do for a brain. How how do you attend to your physicality? Yeah, no, I just be lifting weights. Um, I don't be. Uh, I used to box when I was younger. I used to skateboard when I was younger, but uh, but I don't I don't be doing that too much anymore. But uh, but yeah, I still just lift weights. But that's that's about it. Okay. And spirituality, what does spirituality mean to you? What does that look like in your life, Max? Damn. Um, I feel like I'm living it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I, I'm a big believer in like all that type of stuff. And uh, like, like my sister put me onto that. And um, yeah, like I'm, I'm a big believer in just giving thanks to the, to the universe and the higher power. And uh, always knowing that it's on your side, even when it feels like it's not and you might feel like the world's against you. It's just like just giving thanks and being like, yo, I love who I am. I love the life that you gave me, you know, and just being grateful. I always try to be grateful and just thankful and know that wherever I'm at. It's going to get better, you know, and it it'll. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna get to my destination. You know, I always try to remind myself that you gotta you gotta just leave it leave it to the higher power and everything will happen if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um from the top of your mind, what comes to your mind right now? What are three things you're most grateful for in this moment? Damn, definitely thankful for my family. Um, I'm thankful for the life that I'm living and just being able to be me and, uh, express myself the way that I do. And I'm, I'm thankful for just everybody that's supporting and, uh, been supporting new supporters, old supporters, and just everything that's going on in my situation and everybody around me. I'm really just thankful for everybody you know what i mean everybody that's a part of my journey right now yeah absolutely you mentioned a few times that you you love audiobooks what have been some of your favorite audiobooks and what were the takeaways from those listens uh the three magic words is definitely my like favorite favorite one uh i don't know if you ever listen to that book but uh check it out the, the three magic words is i am god so the whole book is just basically telling you that It's basically saying that everybody's a God and it's just saying, it's telling you the tricks to your brain, you know, like how to think a certain way and how to realize that it's trippy. It's trippy. I don't even know how to explain the shit, but it's a really good book. It's a really good book. So that's definitely my top one. Uh, The Way of the Superior Man. That's a good book. Um... Damn, I can't think of the other one. There's a few that I just listened to. Oh, 48 Laws of Power. That's a good one. Robert Greene, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good one. I just listened to that one, I think, uh, in October. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
so the audiobook three magic words um tells us about how we are god i am god um i also feel like i am love you are love we are love what does that word mean to you love 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 is a love is a very strong word i feel like i feel like uh i don't use that word lightly you know like the people that i love i got strong love for and it's like people like i would die for and i consider them family you know what i mean like they don't have to be my blood but i love them that much you know what i mean so i feel like it's a it's a connection you know mm -hmm. beautiful um let's shine some love on some fellow heroes on the path fellow heroes stuck at the crossroads the crossroads of should, the crossroad of must. The path of should is what we've been told by our media, our schools, maybe our parents, our families, our culture. Um, that tell us to kind of keep play play it safe, you know. Um, versus the path of must, and that's like the inner calling in our heart that longs. For something more the path that you have decided to pursue um but so many people they're stuck they're stuck at that path um unsure of what to do so they do nothing what advice would you give a fellow human a fellow hero on that path of should and must um they're feeling the pull the shoulds of society i should get that nine to five job i should play it safe i should just stay in my known world versus stepping into the unknown with pursuing that must um and embarking upon the hero's journey what advice would you give that person i feel like you gotta really have a i don't give a fuck attitude like if you have something that you love and that you want to do or if you feel like you're bigger than what you're doing or the situation you're in you really just gotta have a i don't give a fuck attitude go out there and chase it and know that people are going to judge you. People are going to say shit. People are going to make fun of you. And it might last, it might last a couple of years, might last a couple of months, couple of days, couple of hours. But when you get to where you're, where you know you're going to be at and where you're destined to be, everybody else will follow you and tell you, yo, you inspired me. Yo, like, how can I do this? How can I do this? So you got to really, just not give a fuck what anybody thinks and go after what you want because you can do it. And you really just have to believe in yourself. It's a, it's a confidence thing. And it's not just, it's not like a being cocky, like, Oh yeah, I'm better than everybody. Da, 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 da. Like I'm gonna do this. You just have to believe that. Like, I feel like I'm blessed and I'm, I'm like the voice. Like, I feel like I didn't pick to do this you know what i mean i feel like this was given to me and now it's my it's my duty to give back and help other people and inspire people and give other people opportunities to do cool shit so they could do what they love and you know what i mean so yeah. but what if this what if this hero at that crossroads of shit and must they hear what you say but then they respond well what if i fail Ooh, well, for me, I would rather fail trying, knowing that I'm doing something my way than following what anybody else is telling me. And then when I'm fucking 70, being you know, like, well, shit, I hate my life. Like, this sucks. You know what I mean? Like, like, what did I do? I fucking listen to this guy for my whole life and I didn't chase my dream. It's all like, no, if you if you have a dream. And if you're scared that you're going to fail, know that you probably will fail at some things. But if you don't give up, you'll make it there. Like, you, the only thing is you can't quit because the, the fucking second you quit is it's over. You're done, you know. And if you never start, you never know what it could have been. So you just got to do it. Know that you're going to fail. It's going to be okay. It'll only get better. That's that's the only thing that happened for me. You know, I failed a million times. 
I just never sat down and gave up. I always got back up and kept pushing. That's beautiful. That's admirable. And I feel it has to do with your mindset. You know, we have two mindset options that things are happening for us or they're happening to us. And mm -hmm. the mindset that I choose to embrace and the one you as well is it's all happening for us. You know, it's all happened for happening for our evolution, for our growth. And, and that's a choice. That's a choice that we can make, or it, it could be happening to us. And then like, that's not very empowering. And I don't know, that's not a path that I wish to walk. 1000%. And yeah, even just, uh, yeah, you can never feel like, I don't know, I guess everybody's different. But for me, I try to never feel like, why me? Why me? Why me? It's always, okay, this is happening for a reason. Let's try and find the lesson in it. Because yeah. this is bigger than what I think it is. This, You know, it's it's always bigger than, there's always a lesson. There's always a lesson. There's always a message. It's always something deeper than just the surface level shit, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Meeting that adversary with thanks and gratitude mm -hmm. um, just shifts things completely. So a lot of great gems of wisdom shared by you so far in this conversation. Um, it's now time for my final three conversations, which I ask every guest. And they're all pretty big questions, um, starting with this one. So through it all, through all the highs and lows, that is this hero's journey, that is this life. Um, what has been the greatest life lesson you've learned on your path thus far that you feel called in this moment to share? I think we were saying this earlier, like the the live in the moment, enjoy enjoy where you're at and enjoy the process because it's about it's about the process and the journey, not the destination, and. Yeah, like I, I feel like I just started preaching that to myself because I've always heard it, but I didn't really like realize like, yo, you're you're just wasting time by not appreciating these moments. Like these are going to be some of your favorite moments that you're going to look back on one day and be like, fuck, why didn't I why didn't I enjoy that that night better? Why didn't I do this that day? You know, so really just enjoy the moment, enjoy the journey. And it's not about the destination. Yeah, absolutely. The moment is all we have and it's infinite. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just playing out again and again and again. It's it's who we choose to show up as in this moment that dictates the path that we walk on. 1,000. Um, in three words, how would you describe the experience you were having on this earth? And you can elaborate on those three words if you wish. It doesn't have to be a sentence, but what are three words that you will that you will use to describe the experience you are living that you are having on this earth? I was gonna say it was lit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good. That works. But, so, uh, what does that mean but, to you? Three words. Three words. No, yeah. Hold up. I will go with it was lit because I feel like I try to I try to have fun and really just. Like for me, I don't take myself too serious. Like I've been through some shit, but I know who I am where I'm not like, I'm not trying to be this guy that it's not me. You know what I mean? Like, so I can make fun of myself. I can do this. I can do that. And I'll have, I'll have a good time. You know what I mean? So I feel like, yeah, it was lit. It's just, like enjoy enjoy the small things enjoy the the good people around you enjoy the yeah like the company you keep is is a big thing in this shit in in life and period if if you don't have good company around you then it it sucks you know what i mean because i've even been at a point where i didn't have good company around me and and it, it was shitty but now that i do have the good people around me I, I love every moment of it because I'm always just laughing. You know what I mean? And I feel like if you're laughing with the people that you love, you'll probably age 20 years less, you know? Like you probably won't be as wrinkly when you're 70 and shit. Yeah, absolutely. So what does good company look like to you? Who are the people, what does like, who is like, what are the people that you surround yourself? What do you want them to be like? Who? What? Yeah, what does that good company look like? I feel like good company for me is just, people who share the same morals principles and just outlooks on life and 
and they live by it, you know, like they don't, they don't fold or bend for anybody else's rules because they, they stick to what they believe on. They're standing on business on, this is what I believe. This is what I think is true. And we just have fun. Like all my homies are, are jokesters. You know what I mean? Like they all just love to laugh and talk shit. So that just makes it better for me because I'm kind of just a quiet guy who just, I just chill. You know what I mean? So when my homies are just talking shit and having fun, it's just, it's fun for me. You know what I mean? I just, I love it. Amazing. I don't know. I feel like we might, might have just thought of two, two song concepts here. Um, a song, it was lit and <laughs> right like that. And then also a song like good company about like, I don't know the, the people. I fuck with good company. I fuck with good company for sure. I'm gonna have to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so just some seeds there um and my final question we're gonna play around with time um uh, we examine your past we examine your present and we're gonna fast forward to the future we're gonna fast forward far away in time and we're gonna be alongside a 85 year old max win who is that man where are you who are you surrounded by what is the predominant feeling in your being and what is the legacy that you've left here in your 85 years Damn, you know what? That's dope. Cause I see myself being at like one of my big ass cribs. I see like I see my big ass family. Cause I I I imagine myself having a big, big family when I'm older. You know what I mean? Like I wanna have like like fucking 20 like kids and grandkids. You know what I mean? Like I wanna have like a big family. So I see just all of them around me and just I see me just like telling my story to them and, and giving them game on how to live life and how to enjoy life and how to do this and how to do that. Because for me growing up, I have uh like I grew up with my moms and my sister, you know what I mean? So I didn't really have like a a, a male role model in my life that wasn't like a, a older homie. You know what I mean? Like my my papa and stuff, he was like around but he lived in Windsor when we were in Winnipeg so I wasn't around him like that you know what I mean but so I always just thought about I want to be there for like my sons and my grandsons you know what I mean I want to I want to be the the male role model in their life that I never had so that's where I see myself being you know incredible so yeah you're you're in one of your big ass cribs you're with your family you're being a role model to the children and the grandchildren in your life um you're leading by example what are the predominant feelings in that 85 year old man i feel like happy bittersweet knowing that it, it's it's gonna be over soon but like uh i did it i feel like i know that i'm gonna have that feeling of i did it i did everything that i told myself i was gonna do I helped everybody who I said I was going to help. Now, all I need to do is take care of my family until the day that I go and I'll be happy. Incredible. Um, I just invite you to close your eyes for a minute, take a deep breath. And I just really want you to feel into that 85 year old Max win, everything that we just talked about. Um, and I'm going to bring us back to the present. I'm going to bring us back to the present day. And that 85 year old man, he sends you a message. What does he whisper in your ear? Okay, wait, you want me to do that now? Hold up. <laughs> yeah, what does that 85 year old say to you? Take your time. Just connect with him. Embody him. You are him. What does that 85 year old wise man say to you? He said, I'm proud of you. <laughs> okay. Incredible. I'm proud of you as well, Max. Um, your story... It's pretty epic and it's only it's only getting started um for people wanting to connect with you they could find you um, on instagram at max wins ls and you also have a website at maxwins.ca which will link to all your all your things spotify youtube any last closing words for you from my you? man i want to thank you bro because this is one of my favorite conversations you know what i mean i feel like you asked amazing questions and i had a good time chopping it up with you bro so mad respect yeah and i look forward to taking in one of your live events sometime soon so yeah you... pull up bro pull up it, it gets lit it gets lit man to close every conversation we bring our fist in a digital fist bump a step into the winner circle
Boom. <laughs> Boom. My man. Thank you so much. Blessings. Love, bro. Love, bro. I appreciate you.